Now, that's all fine and dandy. But if you don't have illumination from the Holy Spirit, verse 14, even though the Holy Spirit, His ministry of revelation and inspiration, if He does not provide illumination, for instance, verse 14, a natural man, a person who's not saved, can open this book and read these words, he won't accept them. In fact, he rejects them. He considers them moronic, right? A natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. What are the things of the Spirit of God? What's our context? Hello, the Holy Scriptures. Given by the Holy Spirit, right? Revelation and inspiration. A natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Have you ever sat down with a non-believer, maybe in your family? You open up a passage of Scripture, and you're like, isn't this great? And you understand it, and you're, you know, so excited about it, and the non-believing family member looks at you and goes, what? I don't get it. In fact, they scoff at it. Well, that's what Paul's saying here. The Holy Spirit reveals the thoughts of God. The Holy Spirit superintended those spiritual thoughts to be put into spiritual words, inspiration. But a natural man will not accept the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him. He cannot understand them. Why? Because he is spiritually appraised. No spiritual discernment. Why? Because he's spiritually dead. Cannot understand them. Doesn't want them. Rejects them. Which, by the way, guys, what does that mean to you when it comes to evangelizing non-believers? You are powerless to convince somebody unless the Holy Spirit regenerates them and gives them spiritual life to then be able to understand. So take the pressure off yourself. Save your money and don't go to conferences that promise to teach you how to identify a person's felt need and if you can identify their felt need you can lead anybody to Christ. Really? So in other words, you're the illuminator, not the Holy Spirit? And by the way, a very, very well-known megachurch pastor in this country wrote in his book those very words. All I need to do is figure out the person's non-believers felt need and he said, I can lead anybody to Christ. Really? Verse 14 says that a non-believer does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. He cannot understand them because he is spiritually appraised. Spiritually, he lacks spiritual discernment. He's dead to God. So our responsibility is simply to declare the truth of God. And you have to leave the results to the Holy Spirit of God. Right? Think of the Jehovah's Witnesses. They read the scriptures constantly. You know, they come knocking on my door. I let them in. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> hey, sit down. Let's talk. You open up their... They've got things highlighted and underlined. And yet, they deny the deity of Christ? I mean, we just... This past Lord's Day, took a look just in John's Gospel. How many places... Scripture declares, Christ declared His deity. And yet they deny it. Why? They have revelation given by the Spirit. They have that revelation put down on paper through inspiration of the Spirit. What are they lacking? Illumination. Think of the scribes and Pharisees. Right? Just hop over real quick and we'll come right back. Uh, go to John. Isn't this what Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees? I mean, look at John chapter 5. I mean, what an example of being spiritually dead. Look at verse 39, what Jesus said to them. He said, you search the scriptures. Obviously referring to the Old Testament scriptures, right? Right? He said to them, you search the scriptures. In the Greek, it's you diligently are searching, studying the scriptures. That's a good thing. He said, because you think in them, you have eternal life. He said, it is these that testify about me. And you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Why? Because they did not have the regenerating, illuminating work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. They searched the Scripture. They searched the Scripture. They studied the Scriptures. The Scriptures that Jesus said, testify about me. And yet they wouldn't come to Him. That's an example of a natural person. Again, back to 1 Corinthians. Verse 14, a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But, verse 15, he who is spiritual i.e. regenerated by the God, the Holy Spirit, a person who is in Christ, the teleos, in Christ, he who is spiritual, appraises all things. Guess what? You're able to discern light from darkness, truth from error, Godliness from ungodliness. Holiness from unholiness. Why? The illuminating power of the Holy Spirit. You now can clearly see the difference, right? Is that, Allie, because you're so smart? No. God's wisdom was predestined for you before the foundation of time. God's wisdom has come to you. How? The Holy Spirit revealed it. The Holy Spirit inspired it. And the Holy Spirit illuminates your mind to truth. So that you are able to appraise all things. Yet you yourself, you're appraised by nobody. What does he mean there? Non-believers. That doesn't mean that non-believers cannot recognize, let's say, hypocrisy in a believer or so forth. That's not what he's saying there. What he's saying here is this. Just like non-believers don't get this, non-believers don't get us. Right? Have you ever had a non-believer say something like that to you? Like, you're weird. Why, why, why do you... They, they, they don't get you. And so, that which is in the spiritual realm, the Holy Scriptures, 
God's holy people who are alive in the spiritual realm, they don't understand us. And that's why you never allow a non-believer, a natural person, to direct your life. How you raise your kids. How you run your business. How you as an employee serve in your business. You never let non-believers try to wow you with their wisdom. And the sad thing is, in the church today, how many churches have opened their doors and they've allowed the wisdom of the world to direct the best way for church growth. Paul says, verse 14, a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by nobody. You don't need to go to a conference run by non-believers to learn, to, to, to try to glean some wisdom how to manage God's money that he's, he's entrusted to you. You don't need to, 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 to go and, 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 and to, you know, some motivational uh, non-believing guru to, to figure out how to find meaning and joy in your life. Because, verse 16, who has known, quoting from Isaiah 40 that we saw earlier, who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? What's the answer? No one. Guess what, gang? Finish verse 16. What do you have? We have the mind of Christ. And how is it, Troy, that you have the mind of Christ? Did God just shout it from the throne in heaven? Here's understanding, Troy. No. It originates from God. It is God's wisdom. It has been predestined for you, Troy. And look at the work of the Holy Spirit when it comes to the Holy Scripture. The Holy Spirit, who searches the depths of God, who knows the thoughts of God, because He is God, He revealed the thoughts of God to particular people. But He didn't stop there. Those spiritual thoughts were put down into spiritual words protected perfectly by the superintending power of the Holy Spirit. So God's thoughts that no eye could see, ear could hear, no heart could conceive. God's thoughts have come to us, God's people. And you have the mind, the understanding of Christ. I'll say it like I said the last few weeks. You are the wisest people in the world. Are you starting to believe it? Don't forget, it's great we have revelation. It's great that we have the Holy Scriptures inspired by the Holy Spirit, but unless the Holy Spirit illuminates these truths to us, 
We can't understand them. And so, as I conclude, go to Psalm 119. There's a great prayer when you're sitting by yourself with an open Bible. Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. You want to have greater and greater understanding when it comes to the mind of Christ? You've got to humbly come to the Holy Spirit who regenerated you, Christian, who indwells you, Christian, who has sealed you, Christian, and who is not simply with you, but he is in you, Christian. And you need to humbly ask him all the time as you're getting ready to read the holy scriptures that he has revealed, that he has inspired, you humbly ask him for illumination. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your